My name is Scott Dinstead. I have 4,500 hours. I'm a CFI and a CFII. I'm also a private pilot with an instrument rating and commercial rating. I started out as a meteorologist for the National Weather Service. Then I ended up getting out of that business for a little while and become a software developer. And in that particular case, I did some software applications for weather applications such as radar. And then sometime in the 90s, I got to a point where I said, I want to go and learn to fly. So eventually, I became a, uh, a pilot, learned to fly in the 90s, and eventually became a flight instructor. Well, I learned to fly at Baltimore BWI, a Class B primary airport. So it really was an experience in itself. So I was able to basically talk to air traffic controllers in a very busy environment. So you had to land in, in a situation where you had to taxi into some really complex um, taxiways and understand that you're not the only airplane out there, but there's a lot of big heavy iron out there as well. My career right now is basically a self-employed um, employee of my own company, AVWX Workshops, Inc. In that particular case, I basically do one-on-one -on -one training. I also do and write a lot of articles. I've written a couple books, but I'm also a flight instructor full-time. I get into airplanes probably once or twice a year right now uh, to, to go flying because, my again, my focus is trying to teach how, how uh, pilots can actually stay away from adverse weather and also teach them how to use products like SiriusXM. Well, I tell my students about SiriusXM to use it as a tool. It's a strategic tool to get from point A to point B. Most of us have a proposed route that we want to take, but at some point in time, the weather challenges us on that route. And so the, one of the important things that most pilots need to know is that it's a, a strategic, not a tactical avoidance tool. The fact is that SiriusXM has your back. Essentially, you're going to be able to see the weather before it evolves into something that you can't handle as a pilot. So one of the characteristics that I like to, to, to tell all of my students um, is that you need to also pay close attention to your decision making when you're along your route of flight. If you're making more than 30 degrees heading changes to avoid weather, that's probably a bit much. You should be making heading changes on the order of 10 to 15 degrees. If you're making more than 30 degrees, you're most likely making decisions too late or you're too close to the weather. I use ADSB weather as a backup, mainly. I know that with a GDL 52 that I carry and use, I have the ability to see both. It's always nice to con contrast and compare the two just to see what's happening because there are some things that come up from time to time that show that the two don't always match, especially on the radar depiction. The primary reason I use SiriusXM Aviation Weather is it gives me the ability to see all the weather coast to coast. When I make a flight plan to go from my departure airport to my destination, I know that I have a complete set of guidance in front of me. I don't have to worry about a situation where I'm missing some of the higher resolution data. So I can make decisions as far in advance as I possibly uh, uh, make those decisions. I want to be in a situation where if I know that my route or my destination is not going to work out, I want to be able to get to my, my alternate airport as soon as possible. The least amount of fuel I can burn uh, to be in that situation is the better. The SiriusXM weather features I use the most are typically associated with the radar depiction. I also like to use the Echo Tops product as well so I can identify the depth of the particular weather that's occurring. And I always want to have lightning turned on as well in addition to SIGMETs, especially during thunderstorm season. To see all that information um, in, in full resolution capability, that's really the critical to me as a pilot and as, as a flight instructor.